thank you. Uh, it's really wonderful to be here. Um, it's so much nicer than the life I'm leading on the other side of the Pacific. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in this race to uh, be nominated to be able to be president of the United States, so I have to demonstrate to people that I can do presidential things. And one thing the American president does periodically is he makes secret trips to the troops. He disappears, nobody knows where he is for 12 hours, and then he appears you know, in Afghanistan or in Iraq or something. So I figured what I would do is to make a secret trip to the troops, the free culture troops here. So yesterday I was in New York after the debate and I disappeared, nobody knew where I was, and then today I'm here with you, my friends, my family, um, the free culture troops that have done such an incredible job in moving an idea which I think Yochai has so powerfully summarized. So thank you for welcoming me and thank you for being here. It's important for us elders to remind you kids of where you come, from where you come. This project was the failure of a legal action. When I was at the Harvard Law School in the late 1990s and Congress passed the Sonny Bono Copyright Term Extension Act, an act which extended the term of existing copyrights by 20 years, we brought a lawsuit on behalf of a man named Eric Eldred. And Eric Eldred was an online publisher who wanted to publish the poems of Robert Frost, which were to pass into the public domain and would have passed into the public domain had Congress not extended for the 11th time in 40 years the existing terms of copyrights. And so as a law professor, as someone who had no desire to be an activist, who loved the idea of staying in a library, writing things which no one read, because then it didn't matter what I wrote, I could just write what I cared about, I learned of Eric Eldred and I reached out to him and said, why don't we challenge this decision by Congress? Because it seems so plainly inconsistent with the idea of copyright for a limited time. And Eric Eldred said, fine, and we brought his case all the way to the Supreme Court. But just before we were going to the Supreme Court, Eric Eldred said to me, look, I appreciate what you're doing, but I don't think we're going to win. And I don't want this just to be a lawsuit. So I want you to promise me you will start a foundation committed to the commons. Um, and of course, I was convinced we were going to win, so I thought, okay, I can make that promise. You know, it's an easy promise, because if I win, I don't have to start the foundation, and I don't have to do all that work to build an organization. So what I did was make the promise and lose in the Supreme Court. And that defeat gave birth to you. Because once we lost, I had to deliver on the promise that I had made to Eric Eldred. And so a number of us, I see Eric Saltzman is back there and Mike is back there and Hal Abelson and Jamie Boyle uh, uh, and I sat down at some offices in Harvard and figured out how we would build what would become the Creative Commons. And the most proud moment I remember from that early days was the way we could bring and did bring a young technical community into what seemed to be just a legal argument. And one of the early victories for me was persuading a young boy, I think he was 14 or 15 at the time, named Aaron Swartz, to become the technical architect of the Creative Commons. And it took a little persuading, but I told him this is what he had to do, and that's what he agreed to do, and he became that architect, and there's still a famous video of him introducing the technical architecture of Creative Commons in 2002 when we launched Creative Commons. He stood about here to the podium as he spoke to about 800 people in an audience about what Creative Commons would be, and that was its birth. 
But the most transformative moment in that birth was when someone said, why don't we make this global? And we launched a project to internationalize Creative Commons. And I remember 10 years ago coming to Korea and being inspired uh, in a way I hadn't ever expected I would by the way this had been globalized. Jay organized an event of judges and lawyers. It was in a small room somewhere in the middle of Korea. They were all dressed in suits. They were serious people. They were real lawyers and judges. And the senior member of the bar of, of Korea, and I kind of thought I was in the wrong room because I'd never seen a group like this gathered together to talk about Creative Commons. But there it was, it was a real meeting of real lawyers talking about the future of copyright as it related to Creative Commons and launching the CC Korea, Korea project. Um, um, and I was so incredibly inspired by the work that they did. And of course, so Jay, anytime he asks me, has the power to pull me from across the, uh, across the world to come to his conferences. And, um, that was really the birth of an incredible movement of energy. And CC Korea, I think, has been the most important force in changing and growing the idea of what Creative Commons is. Because as Jay's description shows, this project in Korea is not just about copyright. It's not just about the idea of sharing in this intellectual property space. It's about a much bigger idea of sharing and collaborating, the idea which Yochai's work has formalized and so um, carefully described. This is where it lives here in CC Korea. And I'm uh, so proud to see the way that's grown. Now, since that time, of course, a lot's happened. We've had our, uh, we've had our victories. We've had our tragedies. Um, we have our martyrs. Vassal still is in a Syrian jail. Uh, fighting for his freedom and supported by many people in this community but still not able to join us back here in Korea. Um, it was five years ago I was here too. Basel was here. Um, I gave a speech. I then was sued for that speech in the United States. I used a video of uh, remix video, and a year later, I got a lawsuit notification. I got threatened by the copyright owners that I had violated a copyright. Um, and so I was a little afraid to come back here, thinking maybe the lawyers would be here ready to wrestle me to the ground, but I, apparently they're not here, so I'm happy for that. Um, uh, and, uh, and that event five years ago um, uh, celebrated where we had come. And it was shortly after that event that uh, it became, I'm sorry, shortly before that event that the relationship of me telling Aaron what Aaron had to do reversed itself. Because it was in 2007 uh, that uh, I was finishing my last book on copyright uh, and internet policy. And Aaron came to visit me and he said to me, um, what are you working on? And I was very proud to show him my book and talk up to him about my first TED talk, which I was about to present. And he said, so why do you think you're gonna make any progress in the issues you're working on? Copyright, the internet. Why do you make, think you make any progress on those issues so long as we live in this deeply corrupted government. And I said to Aaron, well, you know, Aaron, it's not my field. It's not what I do. And he said, you mean as an academic? And I said, yes, as an academic. It's not my field. I am a scholar of copyright and the internet. And he said, okay, but what about as a citizen? I said, your field is a citizen. And what he did at that moment was to shame me into leaving this movement, the movement that he had joined when I shamed him into building the architecture of Creative Commons. He shamed me into leaving that movement to take up a fight which 
um, has grown and has consumed my life. And consumed my life right at the moment when many of us feel we failed him and he felt the burdens of the fights that he was in in such a profound way that he had to take his own life. So that transformation led me away. Um, but there's nothing that gives me joy like looking back at things that I had something to do with starting and seeing them flourish and to see the spread of ideas which you have carried forward. So I can't imagine how when Jay said to me, could you come to Korea? And I'm in the middle of a world where everything I'm doing is incredibly difficult and miserable. The only happiness in running for president is actually meeting people, like talking to people about the ideas. Everything out is, is total, this is a technical term, bullshit in this <laughs> space. That miserable experience of doing all that, when Jay said to me, could you come and just be here for a brief moment, I thought, whatever it takes, whatever it takes, I would be here. So I'm so grateful to have a chance to come back to this movement, which is so powerful and flourishing and important in so many ways, to celebrate with you what you've done and to look forward to everything these new generations of kids will help Creative Commons and the sharing culture to be. So thank you so much, and I look forward to spending the afternoon here with you. A thousand years when all our bones have disappeared and every word has been erased.